Welcome to Mr. Hamilton's Math Bites. This video is about creating rules to define sequences, especially when something's not geometric or arithmetic. So we want to create rules to define sequences, and we're going to do that specifically when something is not arithmetic or geometric. And we want to find in a recursion formula and or a general term when possible. If you remember, a recursion formula is a formula where something is dependent on the previous term and then continues on and on. A general term is something that you can find uh, the value of something directly by. Then we want to identify sequences as arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So those are the two things we want to include here. Not every sequence can be represented by a formula, but most can. Recursive sequences are usually easier to find than general terms. We can always figure out how something relates to the previous term. But we can't always figure out how something uh, can be found directly, let's say, to the hundredth term. And that is what's really useful. If we can find a recursive formula, those things can be then fed through loops on computer programming, and we don't need a general term. And so there are certain things that general terms are very difficult to find, and so recursive sequences can be very useful. A general term, this is the third point, can only be stated if an algebraic rule containing the number n can be found. So, strategies to find patterns. The first strategy is check if the sequence is arithmetic. All right, we talked about that a couple of lessons ago. We subtract each value from the previous value to check that. Or if it's geometric, we divide each value by the previous value to determine that. The second strategy we have is calculate first and second differences. And we'll do that using example one. Well, how we do that is the following, and this is actually written incorrectly. Constant first differences means that the general term is, first differences, not quadratic, it means it's linear. A linear equation, so in other words, it's just uh, n, so y equals mx plus b, for example. Constant second differences means that the general term is a quadratic equation. Quadratic, so n squared. Even if you don't find the constant first or second differences, you can still find a pattern and then continue to generate more and more terms after that. The second thing we're going to do in an example is we're going to calculate ratios between the terms. We're going to see how that works. And finally, we want to recognize some special cases, specifically uh, in regards to a denominator. So let's look at this first example together. Example one. It simply asks us to determine the next three terms of the sequence, 184, 141, 106, 78, 56, 39. If it says to determine the next three, num next three terms, I've put this in bold and brackets here, no equation is needed. No equation is needed. But a pattern needs to be found. So the first thing we ask ourselves, is it geometric or arithmetic? Remember, if it's geometric, it's going to have uh, a later term divided by a previous term. And in this case, we would say... Uh, 141, I'm sorry, 141 divided by 184, and we would find that to be approximately equal to 0 0.7663. And then we check the next term, T3 divided by T2, well that's going to be 106 divided by 141, and that would give us approximately 0 0.7518. Those are close, but not the same. So therefore it's not geometric. It's not geometric. Is it arithmetic? Well, if it's a arithmetic, we take a, a later term and we subtract a previous term, right? And so 141 minus 184 is negative 43. And we'll do that again with the next two terms. So a later term, just like we would for first differences, it's a later term minus a previous one. And what we find here is that we get negative 35. Therefore, it's not arithmetic. So if we make a chart of the term number divided by the term value, we say that when a term number, for the first term number we have 184, for the second term number we have 141, for the third term number we have 106, etc. And we calculate the first and second differences. The first difference and there's the second differences. What I'm trying to he see here is I'm trying to see if there's a pattern between those first and second differences that will allow me to continue on and determine the next three terms. And so the first difference of 141 minus 184 is negative 43. That's what I did up above here. And what I was doing was find the first differences because this is a uh, check to see if it's linear. But I know it's not linear. So why in the world am I using the first and second differences? 
to find a pattern. All right, so 78 minus 106, we get a value of negative 28. 56 minus 78 is negative 22. 39 minus 56 is negative 17. Well, now I calculate the second differences. Negative 35 minus negative 43, I get 8. Next one, I get 7. Next one, I get 6. And then I get 5. And so you can see here there's a clear pattern that's forming. These are going down by 1. So what I'll do now is I'll simply take these values, and I will continue these on to find the next three values. And I'll do these in a different color so it's clear what one you're seeing. So for the 7th, 8th, and ninth terms, what's happening is the second differences are going 4, 3, 2. Well, if I go down by 4, I'm going to be at negative 13. If I go down by 3, I'm going to be at negative, uh, negative 10. Sorry. And if I go down by 2, I'm going to be at negative 8. And so if we continue that on, I say, well, okay, then 39 minus 13 gives me a value of 26. 26 minus 10 gives me a value of 16. And 16 minus 8 gives me a value of 8. So the next three terms in my sequence are 26, 16, and 8. Feel free to pause the video now before I jump back up on the screen. Let's look at example two. Now we need a recursive formula, not just determining the next three terms. And what I do here is I always start by seeing if it's arithmetic or geometric. So 1, 4, 10, 22, 46, 94. Um, it's pretty clear that it's neither, but let's actually do that so we can see why, so we can show that. Uh, if I go 4 minus 1, well, that's equal to 3. And if I go 10 minus 4, well, that's equal to 6. It's clearly not arithmetic. And is it geometric? Well, I could go 4 divided by 1. There's a second term divided by the first one. That's 4. And the third term divided by the second term is equal to 2 and a half. Clearly not geometric either. So step two, find a pattern between consecutive numbers by dividing one term by the previous term. So really what I'm doing is I'm going to continue these fractions these ratios that I've tried to calculate earlier to see if it was geometric to see if this gives me some type of pattern or something that's approaching. And so I'll start off with doing this um, 4 minus 1 again, or 4 divided by 1 rather, and that gave me 4. When I took the third term and divided it by the second term, that gave me 10 divided by 4, which is 2.5. When I take the fourth term and divide it by the third term, we see that the value ends up being 22 over 10. It's 2.2, interesting. And T5 divided by T4 gives me a value of 46 over 22, and that's approximately equal to 2.09. And what I hope you realize here is that this is approaching 2. Well, what does it have to do with anything? Well, it's going to help us come up with this recursive formula. And here's how we do that. Go down with me to the next part. We literally make a chart, just like we did previously, uh, but this chart's going to be a little different. Again, we're going to start off with our term number and, and the term value. And because it's approaching 2, we're going to say, well, what would 2 times the previous term be? Right? Because it's approaching 2, we're going to say, what is 2 times the previous term? Because that's what Tn minus 1 is. It's 2 times the previous term. And we're going to see if that gives us some type of pattern to work with here. The first term is 4. First term is 1, I'm sorry. First term is 1. And is there a previous term to that? No, there is not. It's the first term. The second term is 4. 2 times the previous term of 1 is 2 times 1, which is 2. The third term is 10. Okay, 2 times the previous term which was 4, gives me 8. Well, this is interesting. That's, that's 2 less in each case. For the fourth term, that was 22. And now if I take 10 and I multiply that by 2, I get 20. That's 2 less again. We're on to something for sure. And now the fifth term was 46. And 22 times 2 gives me 44. So exactly every time what we have is... We double the previous term, and we're two away from the next term. So what we do is, in a third column, we say, uh, what's the difference, or what changes? 
what still needs to change. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm simply going to add 2. When I add 2, I get 4. When I add 2, I get 8. Or sorry, I get 10 here. When I add 2 to, ten, to 20, I get 22. When I add 2 to 44, I get that 46. And I'm back at the term that I want. So what that means is that the term value that I'm looking for is equal to 2 times the term value of the previous term plus 2. That's what I've added in every case, plus 2. The restrictions here would be that n has to be greater than 1. Otherwise, I'm taking 2 times the term of 0 in the equation, which is impossible. And n is the set of all natural numbers. So the restrictions are, are small communication errors uh, if you don't include those. And there you go. That's your recursive formula. And so what you could do is you could substitute in the previous term values over and over again. And you could do that 100 times over to generate the first 100 terms if you wanted.